Welcome to this webinar, Conquering Your Goals. Uh, we will commence shortly. In the meantime, uh, please open your chat box and type in what you would like, like to achieve from today's webinar. And uh, so we've uh, got a couple of people have already logged in and uh, we'll just wait a moment or two. There's still a few more to come. So in the meantime, uh, please uh, just open up your chat box down the bottom and type in what it is that you would really like to achieve out of today's webinar. Okay, so um, thank you for investing your time today to learn how to conquer your goals in your personal and business environments. The fact that you are here puts you in a minority of people that consider goal setting is an important factor of personal and business success. The content that I will be covering today uh, is flavoured towards setting and achieving business goals although the, the, the same principles also apply to the setting and achievement of your own personal goals as well. Uh, before I move on, uh, can, um, Tamira, can, can you hear me at the moment? I can, yes. Oh, fantastic. So I just wanted to check that everybody uh, can hear me. Uh, if you can't hear me, just please type in the, uh, the chat box and we'll see what we can do to rectify that. All right, so um, let's get started. Uh, so a quick introduction about me. Um, in 2013, I had one of those aha moments. Um, You see, Robin and I, or Robin, my wife, had been married for 35 years, and I realised that during that time, I had spent a significant amount of time living away from home in the pursuit of chasing my career and also business goals. It was at that time that I asked myself, why are we doing this? I immediately made a decision that when my next contract finished, I was going to find a business that I could work from home with. So to cut a long story short, I came across the Action Coach franchise and the rest is now history. Not only did I get to live at home again, I also found my why, my why in life and what I stand for. And that is inspiring business success an achievement one step at a time. I'm honoured and feel very privileged to have gained significant business knowledge throughout my 30 plus years in senior management within the corporate food industry. And then in the last 14 years of being in business for myself. During that time, I've been involved in implementing significant changes with my clients via goal setting, and focusing on the plans for achieving those goals. And that's occurred in many different and varied business environments. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of this experience with you today. Now, if you haven't already opened your chat box, um, which you'll find at the bottom of your screen, please post any questions or comments you have throughout the webinar, and I will answer them as we get to them. Uh, or at the end of the webinar itself. So please take as many notes as you can uh, for your own future reference. The process of setting a goal requires you to think about where you see yourself and or your company going in the future. So please let me explain the formula for achieving goals. And the formula is, D times G times L times P times A 
will equals uh, success. Now, what does that mean? It means that the dreams that you have times the goals, times the learning, times the plans you set, times the action that you take. Now, it's important to understand what the, this really means. And quite often I come across um, business owners and other people who, when I ask, well, what are your dreams, is they don't actually allow themselves to dream. So allowing yourself to dream is really the first step in setting and conquering your goals. So allow yourself to dream. Once you've uh, created the dreams for what you want to achieve, then set the goals. And setting the goals, I'll get to in a little bit uh, or shortly in how to actually set your goals. Once you've set the goals, the next part then is maybe there's some learning that you need to do in order to achieve that goal. You know, for example, um, you may have set out your career goal to become an accountant. Now, to become an accountant, do you think you need to do some learning? Of course you do. So, depending on the type of goal that you've set yourself, there may be some learning that you need to undertake in order to achieve that goal. The next one is then setting the plans. So once you've set the goal is then break it down into smaller steps. So uh, which becomes the plans. And then once you've set the plans, it's then you need to take some action. And how you act on your dreams, your goals, the learnings, and the plans that you said will be one of the key things to the achievement of your goals. So once you have that vision, it is your goals that provide the direction, the motivation, and the framework to take the action that's necessary to achieve them. A goal is easy to set, but a good goal is tied to something meaningful. It is measurable, specific, and also has a time frame. The first step is to set an achiev achievable goal is to find out what motivates it. So what purpose does the goal serve for you or the, oh, excuse me, for you or the business? That's a question that you really need to ask yourself um, and really think about what is that purpose. So what do you stand for? A company's values lie at the heart of the business and serve as the foundation for setting and achieving goals. This also applies for personal values and what you would like to achieve in life. Identifying your personal and or company's core values is a fundamental step on the road to success. As once you've established what those values are, you have the answer to a very important question. And that is, why do I do what I do? A great question. It is the why that you lead with. It is what you stand for and what your company, product or service is promoting. This is the basis for defining your goals and putting a plan in place to achieve them. So a question for you, why do you do what you do? What gets you out of bed every morning? Have you been able to define your why? So please type yes or no in the chat box and whilst you're doing that, um, I guess if you recall, I said I spent a lot of time um, in corporate career and in that time I changed jobs many times. It's only been recently that I've reflected back and uh, understood that I was probably always searching for my why every time I changed a job. It wasn't until I uh, started with Action Coach that I actually found my why. And 
it was uh, it came several years after I started, and that why I was uh, helping business owners and inspiring them to achieve their goals one step at a time. Okay, um, so what's important now is once you've set the goals is to visualize them. Visualization is a great way to put energy behind an idea to help it come to, to life. It involves setting a goal and creating a visual through pictures or mental imagery of what you want your future to look like. To do this, you might set up a vision board in your office, posted with images, ideas, and steps to communicate, focus, and encourage specific steps along the way to achieving your goal. Or you may choose to do your visualizing prior to introducing your goal to the greater team or even the family. One way to practice visual, visualization is to sit quietly for a few minutes a day to relax, clear your mind and allow your ideas to start flowing. So what does your vision board look like? I know some of my clients, they take photos of what they'd like to achieve, post it on their fridge. Some people set up a whole, uh, I guess, cardboard uh, cutout with all the different steps uh, in the form of pictures and paste them onto that cardboard and then put them somewhere that they can see every day. The 80-20 rule uh, or the Pareto principle. The 80-20 rule is based on the concept that pe people naturally divide into two groups. The top being the 20% of achievers versus the bottom 80% comprised of the non-achievers. You can apply this idea to goal creation if you are having a difficult time deciding on what goals would be the most productive. Here's how. Make a list of 10 goals. Now choose two based on your first or second choice by determining which goals on your list would have the most positive impact on your life. The two you choose are your 20%. Give this exercise a try and ask me if you need any clarification down the track. There are short-term and long-term goals to set when building a strategy for your future. And it's important to have a plan in place for both of those. A long-term goal is going to be anywhere between three and five years ahead and should be created based on your own or your company's big picture objectives. Short-term goals, on the other hand, are going to be anywhere between a few months to three years and should always work to support the longer-term goal. Next, let's take a closer look at how each serves its purpose of achieving your vision. The basis for a long-term goal should be aligned with your company's mission and reflect on its purpose. This is the big picture goal that sets the course for your future. Generally, a long-term goal involves growth in four major areas of your company, service, social, profit, and growth. Let's look at service. So service is relating to increasing customer service satisfaction and or customer retention. The social goals is something that a focus on giving back to the community. And then profit is to increase profits by a specific amount. And then growth is related to the company development. How is it going to grow and achieve the things that the team are aiming to. So, do you have a long-term goal?
With your long-term goal in place, the next step is to figure out how to get there with short-term goals. In other words, breaking the long-term goal down into smaller, smaller goals with an action plan. Now, while your long-term goals are broad and serve a higher purpose, your short-term goals become specific and designed to be executed within, within a shorter time frame. So these goals also support the overarching goal and allow you to measure your progress along the way as you accomplish them. One way is to take some time out every 90 days and write down three to four goals that you would like to achieve in the next 90 days that are aligned with the longer term goal. That is, break the bigger goal down into those smaller goals. The next step is to then create a step-by-step -step action plan that will enable you to focus on achieving that goal. Do this for the three or four goals that you've set out for the next 90 days. So, what is your strategy for reaching your goals? Something to think about and consider. Short-term goals are actionable items and setting them requires specificity, a time frame, and a strategy for measuring how you get closer to your overall longer term goal. We call them SMART goals and SMART is a plan of action for putting successful short term goals in place. So I'm not sure if you've heard of SMART before, but specifically, S stands for specifically, what is your specific goal? And be as specific as you can in describing or writing down your goal. Measurability is how do you achieve your progress towards your long-term goal. Achievability, or A, is what will you gain by achieving that goal? Is it going to help you in one way or another? R is for relevance. What does achieving a goal mean for you or your business? Is it actually going to be relevant for what you're setting out to achieve. And then T is for timeliness. What is the time frame that you're going to set for achieving that goal? Now let's look at putting an action plan into place. Staying on track with your goals can be a challenge, but one way to help stay motivated is to share your goal with others. Creating visibility means adding another level of accountability which in turn increases your motivation. So consider the following, accountability. Share your idea with others, makes you more accountable as, it, as to when you create an audience, you are more likely to follow through. In other words, tell your friends, your family about what it is that you're trying to achieve. The second thing is clarity. Sharing your goals allows you to see them outside of yourself. And that clarity allows you to gauge if you need to modify them along the way. Connection, share your goals may help you grow your social circle to include more like-minded people who can contribute to your progress. You may have a clear vision for the direction of your company, but it is vital to your success that your team is informed and aboard to execute on your vision. If it's not a business goal, the same thing applies with personal. So share it with your friends and family. What is your vision? One way to do that is to create an operating rhythm or, or cadence to monitor how you are tracking progress towards that goal. This can be done by monthly check-ins, which are a great way to review your progress and evaluate the short-term goals if the team's responsible or the family that's helping you manage that effort. 
It also serves as a great way to communicate with other teams on how the company is progressing. This level of transparency gives your, or keeps your team engaged and motivated by offering a clear picture of how their daily tasks relate to the bigger picture. So do you engage with your family or your team regularly on your goals? So when it comes to your goals, you need to devote the time and sometimes money towards them to achieve them. For example, if your goal is offering the best customer service, then you may need to allocate some funds to hire the right people to answer phones instead of opting for something more automated. Aligning your resources with your goals might also mean that some plans or activities take a back seat to your priorities. The more attention you can give to your goals, the better the likelihood of achieving them. So be aware when setting goals that you don't end up contradicting yourself. If you have several team work or teams working on separate concurrent goals, make sure that those teams are communicating to ensure that your goals don't end up running counter to one another. For example, an example would be a company under the gun to cut costs by reducing headcount, but still trying to meet revenue generation goals, which requires more team members to achieve. A good rule of thumb is to create a roadmap for your goals, therefore setting out before your, uh, towards your objectives. A roadmap is a visual charting of your objectives and the steps necessary to achieve them. As each department or, or of a company typically has a targeted goal that supports the overriding organisational goal, separate from other departments, it's a good idea to create a chart to house all, department, all departmental goals together in a visual format to make sure none of your goals are running counter to each other. This is a process performance metric and a pie chart is a simple way to display and track your department goals to make sure they all align with you and your long-term goal. Let's look at some examples. So creating a pie chart for your departmental goals is a great way to track that progress all in one place. Here is what each section of your pie chart might look like by, de by departmental goal. Let's say it's a, a learning growing strategy perspective. So it might include customer satisfaction, uh, in, what in, are the employee skills or education required, and what is the employee turnover rate. From a customer perspective goal, it might be measuring customer satisfaction. What's the customer retention? How long do they stay with you? And then what is also the brand strength? How does that compare to your market share? If it was a financial goal, you might look at uh, what's the revenue, what are the expenses, and then what's the net income or profit. An internal uh, process perspective might include inventory, orders, quality control, and what are the measurements associated around those. When measuring your goals, think about the milestones. What the milestones are the checkpoints that mark or measure the steps along the way to achieving a goal. Setting such milestones for your goals allows you the visibility to determine, what, determine whether or not your goals are actually tracking successfully. A good way to set milestones is to collaborate with the person or teams responsible for executing your goals to establish what the milestones should be and how often they should be reviewed. This incorporative decision making 
gives a sense of ownership and fosters enthusiastic buy-in from the team to the overall goal. Milestones often reveal the progress made during the course of achieving a goal, so don't forget to celebrate them with the people that made them possible. Having visibility when it comes to tracking and measuring goals means that sometimes the plan needs to be adjusted. This is not something to be frustrated over. Change is hard when you've devoted so much time and effort to achieving something, but following a goal to no achievable end or giving up altogether is not an option when you have a long-term goal in place. What's important here is to recognise that if a goal is not working out or you've come across a roadblock, think of it as just a roadblock. You need to find another path to get you where you would like to end up. So regrouping with your teams to realign the goal and set new milestones keeps the energy and motivation going. Every business has experienced failure, even when the goals are in place and you are tracking performance. Sometimes the plan for the goal just doesn't serve the, the larger purpose or the goal doesn't perform as planned. Staying focused on your big picture provides a solid foundation to address your failures head on. Remember that in failure lies the opportunity to learn from your mistakes. Adopt a habit of looking at failure with your teams to determine what changes are necessary to be more successful in the future. Success only occurs if you keep going. So why do some people give up with goal setting? The main reason is that they have missed one or more steps in the formula for goal setting. That is the dreams times goals, times learning, times plans, times action. So missing one of those steps can be the difference between success and failure. So it's important to understand that formula and really follow the principle. Don't forget the importance of celebrating your successes. When you achieve your goals, celebrate them with your teams. By doing so, you're acknowledging your employees for the value that they add to fulfill your goals and how it is essential to your overall success. And more importantly, don't forget to celebrate with yourself too. How are you going to celebrate? Thank you so much for attending this event. I hope this experience left you with some powerful tools to start achieving your goals. So, um, what I'd like, you know, if you are serious about conquering your goals, start creating your own 90 day plan. And as a reward for investing your time and interest in goal setting today, I'm offering you access to a, attend our next 90 day planning workshop for $49, which is normally priced at 99. This offer will remain open until tomorrow, the 28th of February, uh, but you must email me to take uh, advantage of this offer. So please reach out if you have any questions or concerns. I'm here to help. Some additional reading that uh, may assess. So uh, if you've got a pen and paper there, I'll just read this out slowly. Uh, so author is Nelly Akelp, and that's spent a, uh, spelt A-K-L-P, and the title is Five Steps to Making Your Business Goals Come to Fruition. Some additional reading to uh, assist with goal setting. Another reference is Mario Andretti, 10 Business Goal Setting Tips, How to Set and Achieve Career Goals. 
Uh, and the last one is Peter Boss, How to Set Business Goals. So that's just some additional reading uh, that you might like to refer to in helping you on your path to setting and conquering your goals. Thank you so much for attending this event. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please uh, type them into the chat box now. Um, it means a lot to be able to share this lesson with people who are ready to achieve great things by conquering their goals. Now it's time to get started. So uh, I don't have any questions at this point. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions or concerns. I am happy to help. Thank you for your time again.